السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, those who have reverted to Islam, this is a session for the reverts. And I'm sure every one of you has a unique story. Firstly, we ask Allah to grant a reward to those through whom Allah has guided you. So there has to have been something either online or either in person or some interaction or some feeling that made you change. For that, we thank Allah and we make dua wherever there are human beings involved. And we thank Allah because He is the ultimate guide. My brothers, my sisters, something we definitely need to know is when you have a gift of Allah and when you're holding fast on that gift, shaitan will come and try and take it away from you. So normally with reverts, a lot of the times the Muslims who were already Muslims prior to your reversion offered you a takbir. When you accepted Islam and you said your shahada, they quickly said takbir and everyone said Allahu Akbar. And many times that's the only thing they've given you. Why? Because they are weak. They don't offer a follow-up in most cases. And so they're excited. Sometimes you want to get married. They won't really get you married so easily. All these challenges are part of your test. Are you going to give up the faith simply because some of those who are following it are not practicing or they are racist or they don't treat you well or, for example, they haven't shown any interest in you as a member of the ummah? Not all communities are like this, but many are. So depending on your environment, Allah will test you and shaitan will come and attack you. When shaitan attacks you, he makes you sometimes want to give up. He makes you despondent. But remember one thing, when you learn, you will be able to develop the correct relation with Allah. When you start understanding who is Allah, why am I praying? What am I saying in prayer? Let me make an effort to learn the meanings of some of these Arabic words that I say in my five daily prayers. When you make that effort, you will be able to enjoy your relationship with Allah. Allah says, Allah says, you're conscious of Allah. Allah will teach you. Allah will make sure you know. And when you know, here's what happens. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءُ Indeed, those people who are conscious of Allah in the correct way with the balance of fear and hope are those who have knowledge. If you don't have knowledge of who is Allah and what is the mercy of Allah and how merciful your Lord is and how just He is at the same time, how will you have a beautiful relationship with one whom you don't even know well? So this is the reason why my message for you today is very simple. Learn and learn more. Don't pity yourself. Don't wait for others to teach you. You make an effort to go out and learn. Wherever someone is teaching, go and study. Make an effort. Don't be lazy. Study more. In a short time, you will probably know more than some of the born Muslims, if not a lot of them. And this is what happens. Many reverts are more practicing than those who were born Muslim simply because you had the opportunity to see the darkness. When you came to the light, you appreciated it. You know, when you're sleeping and it's very dark and someone suddenly turns on the light, there is a glare to your eyes. But those who are already in the light, for them, it's nothing much. For them, they don't even realize what type of a gift it is. But when you've been in the dark and suddenly the light comes on, it affects your eyes. That's how dazzling it is initially. And you enjoy it. After a while, you can see everything clearly. The same applies to the darkness that Allah describes of disbelief. And suddenly the light of Iman and Islam comes. The dazzling is there. You follow it and appreciate it much more than those who were already there. And they didn't even realize that all these lights are shining on me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you strength. May he open your doors. I wish that I was with you physically on this day. But still from the city of Medina Munawwara, I ask Allah to bless you all and to bring you to this beautiful city time and again. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you because when you're a revert, you would probably be facing challenges with your families, with your workplaces. Uh, Identifying as a Muslim is not easy on earth today. And that's why those who revert to Islam 
uh, during these times are probably the most genuine because it's the most difficult to revert to Islam at this particular time. Give you an example of the Meccan period where everyone who accepted Islam was being persecuted. It is said that there were no hypocrites from those who accepted Islam in Mecca because it wasn't easy to accept Islam. To do so, you had to have been genuine. Hypocrisy only crept up in Medina Munawwara when it became easier to be a Muslim. Then you have the set of hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul and the others. But in Mecca, because it was tough to be a Muslim, there were no hypocrites. The same applies today to a certain extent where it is very difficult to be a Muslim and there is persecution involved and you become a Muslim. Remember, Allah has chosen you for that sacrifice. Don't give up your faith just because people are treating you badly. They treated those who are better than you even worse than the treatment you are getting. So inshallah, take it in your stride. Keep on praying to Allah. Be good to those around you. Fulfill the, the, the rights of your family members and see them slowly coming to the deen one after the other. May Allah Almighty open your doors. May He grant you goodness. May He make all of us from those who appreciate the light. May He make us tread upon that path of light and goodness until the day when we meet with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter and until the day we are granted entry into Jannatul Firdaus. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. أقول قولي هذا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So my brothers and sisters, sometimes people are crying for help and assistance, and we don't. We don't help them. We don't reach out to them. We have aid organizations such as Human Relief and so many others doing a lot of good work across the globe. Subhanallah. What are they doing? Reaching out to people in need in a different way. Every country that an aid organization visits sometimes is affected by something uniquely theirs. It's a problem. Sometimes it's a flood. Sometimes it's an earthquake. Sometimes it's a mudslide. Sometimes it is a tsunami. Sometimes it might just be a, whatever else it may be, but some form of a disaster. The outbreak of a disease. May Allah grant us all cure and protect us. Those who have any illness and sickness, may Allah grant you cure. Amin. Those who are struggling, I said it yesterday, I'm saying it again today. Those who have been affected by this coronavirus that has overtaken the globe. May Allah grant them cure. May Allah open their doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard the rest of us. No matter what faith they belong to, what nationality they are, where they are from, what their color is, what their size is. May Allah grant them cure. Say Amin. We won't judge. It's wrong for me to say that was a punishment. Subhanallah, did someone come and dish it out to you to say, tell them it's a punishment. Punishment. Go tell them. Let them know. Is that what happened? Not at all. Subhanallah, you could be affected by it and so could I. Yes, it is a reminder from Allah. It may well, perhaps, be a warning from Allah, a reminder, etc. It is, an, it is a disease a virus that is taking over the globe not looking at who you are when the tsunami happened people were saying that's a punishment and i said what about those who died in the masjid while they were in salah and the others who died while they were fulfilling their re or reciting the quran and some died while they were engaged in the dhikr of allah what about them oh i didn't think of that ah, you see leave it to allah to decide it may have been their means of entry into paradise right wouldn't it be Considered as a Muslim the best death to die while you're in prostration, while you're in sujood? One of the best deaths. Who wants to die in sujood? My hand is up. Put your hands down. To do that, you have to read your salah more often. Have you heard what one of the youngsters told me? I said it in one of my talks. The guy says, I want to die in sujood. I said, well, you must read salah. He says, no. If I read my salah, if that dua is accepted, then the possibilities of me dying are greater. I'm like, gosh. You're dealing with people with a brain that's thinking a bit too fast. Man. So he's saying, if Allah accepts my dua to die in sujood, then I'll, I'll start doing that sujood in about 20, 50, 60 years. Astaghfirullah. That's obviously a stupid way of looking at things. But what is meant here is we become closer to Allah. Allah will open. Allah will guide. Allah will give and grant. It's Allah. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has 
increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.